Today we're talking about putting an end to zombies, zombie processes that is, or how to use seed to stop the zombie apocalypse. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Today, I want to talk about zombie processes. This is something that I addressed in a video a long time ago. I talked about how zombie processes are basically just the byproduct of how Unix style operating systems handle child processes and the process of reaping, which is where the parent process waits for the child to complete. And of course, this makes sense for a lot of typical programs, but there may be cases where this doesn't make sense. And so today I want to look at how you prevent this behavior, how you keep child processes from becoming zombies when they finish, if the parent doesn't really care to know that they finished. But before we jump into the example, I want to say a huge thanks to all of you who support this channel, who make this possible, especially those who support the channel on Patreon, where you can get access to source code and my most the office hour. So huge thanks to all of you who helped me keep the camera rolling. But now enough of this, let's get into the code. Okay, so I'm starting today with a very just basic empty program, doesn't do anything, got some header files up here, and I have a main function right here. And of course, I have a make file that's going to compile this program. So really nothing too fancy, nothing to worry about. Hopefully this all just looks very straightforward. Now, we're talking about zombie processes today. And if we want to create zombie processes, let's do something like this. This is probably similar to what I did in that older video. But if we create some kind of loop and then inside this loop, I'm going to fork. There's a bunch of things that I'm assuming you've seen before. So if you've never seen fork and exec, if you've never seen make files, if you've never seen zombie processes, I'm going to link down in the description to a bunch of previous content. Be sure to check those videos out because they'll give a lot of background information that I'm not going to cover in this video today. But a quick recap. So fork is going to create child processes. And if fork returns zero, that means that we're the child process, so not the parent. But so anytime we create a child process, this is a potential zombie process. And so let's just print something out so you can see what's going on. And we'll print out like zombie time. You know, brains. And then also just, you know, convenience so you can see that these are different processes. Let's just also print out each of the child processes process ID. So we'll call get PID here and then whatever it returns, we're going to print that out here just so you can see that we are creating multiple different processes and we're getting the process ID for each of them. And then all these children are going to do because we our point is we want to create zombies. So then we're just going to exit and let's exit uh, success since I guess it's successful if we create these children and they die quickly. And then to make this so it's not too overwhelming, let's add a sleep in here, okay? So this is your standard program if you wanna just create a lot of zombie processes is we're just forking off a lot of children and then those children exit immediately. And the problem is, is that the operating system is assuming that at some point, the parent process might come along and wanna wait for these children to complete. And so the operating system can't clean them up. It can't remove them from the system until they've been reaped, until the parent has been able to get the result from those children and so that's why they become zombies is that they're dead, they're done, but they're not allowed to move on, you know, get cleaned up and freed and, you know, allow these resources to be reclaimed by the operating system. And so we end up with zombie processes. And just, you know, in case you haven't seen this, let's let's compile this really quick. If I run the example here, you can see, okay, we're going to create a bunch of different child processes. And then if I jump down here and we run PS, so that, that gives us a bunch of different things. Let's come in here. You can see you get all these defunct processes. These are basically zombie processes and some operating systems call them different things, but, but these are all the different processes that have not been allowed to move on because I'm not calling wait for them. So it just simply, well, let's do it this way. Let's look at all the processes created by my example program. You can see there's 47, now there's 54. So these are just growing. And if I allow this to go long enough, you can create enough zombie processes that this can become a, it can become an an actual problem. It can use up resources in the system and this can be an issue. So one answer, which is what I talked about in the previous video on zombie processes, one answer is to have the parent process just wait for the child, right? So this would look something like if I put a wait in here and we just wait for it to be done, then this is going to get rid of the zombies. But that's also going to require the parent to actually wait for the child to be done. So let's imagine a scenario where you want to create a parent process, where you want to create child processes, you want them to do something useful, but you aren't going to wait around to find out what that is. You don't have to wait. You can 
continue as the parent to continue to just do what you're going to do. And you're never going to call wait. You just assume that the child does what it's going to do. Now, whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, it will probably depend on your application and maybe a little bit on the assumptions that you make about how software should work. That's okay. I'm not going to judge. I'm just trying to show you how we can actually get behaviors, you know, the particular behaviors that we want out of our software. So that's what we're doing today. And let's see, yeah, now we're up to 146. So yeah, we're just we're just slowly taking over this machine with zombie processes. We come in here, of course, I can kill the process if we come down here. And then if I come down here, you can see that now we basically have no more zombies, right? So that gets rid of it, that's fine. So zombie processes, again, are really only an issue for long running programs that create a lot of child processes. But so now let's look at how we want to avoid these because what I'd really like to do is I'd like to come in here and have something where I can say no more zombies, you know, something like that, make a function that I can just call that's going to say, hey, if I create a child process, I'm not going to wait for it. I don't want it to become a zombie. Now, how would we do that? Well, it turns out there's something really interesting that we can we can make happen. But first of all, let's just make this function. We're going to actually yeah, no more zombies. Actually, let's make it a little more readable and put some underscores in here and we will do the same down here. OK, so now an interesting thing that we want to keep in mind as we're trying to reduce our creation of zombies is that there's something that actually happens every time a child finishes. Every time a child exits, you get a signal. Okay, so that signal is sig child, right? So there's it's signal 20. And if you haven't seen signals before, again, I've got another video on signals, check that out. But the idea is that this is a message that gets sent to the parent process every time that a new child is created, or actually not not created every time a new child exits. Every time you create a child and that child exits, you get a sig child signal. And so one way to prevent zombies from occurring would be to create a signal handler for sig child. You know, so we could do something like that, but it's actually simpler. So let me just show you how we do that. So if I come in here and say struct sig action, so we're going to use we're going to basically use sig action. That's one of the two different ways that you can set up signal handlers, but I'm not actually going to register a handler. Okay, so I'm going to create the struct. We're going to need to come up here and include signal dot h and then down here Okay, with this struct, let's just first mem set because I'm interesting thing about these structs is we don't use all the elements. So we want to make sure that the others are zeroed out. So zero size of sig action. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set a couple of flags. So the first thing I mentioned, I'm not going to create a new handler. So what I'm going to do here is just say sig DFL. What this means is just use the default handler. I don't want to change the signal handler. OK, so just use the default handler for the signal that I'm interested in, which in this case is going to be sig child is down here. I'm going to say sig action sig child and then we're going to pass in this sig action struct and null and so if I do this, this doesn't actually change anything right now. As of right now, I'm just saying, hey, I want to use the default signal handler for sig child, which is what it would do anyway. So I haven't really changed anything. But what we can do here is pretty simply, I can say sa dot flags or s sorry, sa flags. So we're going to set a flag here, which is signal action, no child wait. OK, so and there are a lot of different flags we could set. But what this flag is saying is, hey, I'm not waiting for children. I create children. I send them off into the world. I don't wait for them to die. I don't care what happens with them. This process is very much an inattentive parent. But what this does is it just says, hey, don't make zombies out of my kids. Now, of course, this isn't the only way we could handle this. I'll talk about how else we could handle it in just a second. But before we move on, let's just make sure that I got this all straight. It looks like I didn't. Oh, yep, yeah, I just mistyped my function. So if we come down here, now we create our zombies, right? Or we try to create our zombies. We run our example program just like we did before. But now if we come down here and we try to get our number of processes, you know, we just come in here and look for anything created by example, you can see that we're never getting more than one. We're just getting the one that we created right here. OK, so we've successfully prevented the creation of zombie processes. And of course, I've lost the ability to wait on my children. So so that's a trade off. You know, you can have one or the other, but you don't get both. But for the program that doesn't want to wait for the children, for the program where that makes sense, this can help you not create zombie processes and not take up a lot of resources on your machine for these defunct child processes that you're never going to wait 
wait for. Now, this isn't the only way we could handle this. We could also have come in here and instead of using the default signal handler, we could have created our own signal handler and that signal handler could have called wait on these child processes and clean them up automatically. And this would have, I guess, allowed us to have a little more flexibility if we wanted to wait for some and not for others. Let me know if you wanna see more about how that works in a future video. I can definitely take a look at it more closely. But today, I really just wanted to show you how you can use this SA no child wait flag in order to tell your processes to not make zombie processes out of its children. So I hope that's interesting. I hope you learned something new. I hope this helps you in a future project or at least helps you understand a little bit better how things work under the hood in your programs. If you like the video, be sure to give me a like, subscribe if you don't want to miss future content. Check out my online course, check out my Patreon page, tell a friend, click something on your way out, do something to help pass this along so this content can be available to more people. I really appreciate everything that all of you do to help make this channel possible again. And until next week, I will see you later.